thing out of town. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> These days, it's a rare family that makes enough time to spend together. I met a family in Sheridan, Oregon, which is an exception to that rule. They're together all the time, and for them, it's no grind. What do you do with 180 acres of oak, six pairs of willing hands, and a dream? Well, the Monroe family built a sawmill and proved wrong the experts who said it couldn't be done. Most people I talk to who know much about sawmills, the bigger mills, advise me not to do it because um, they said you can't handle the oak. There's no market for it. It's hard to cut. Uh, the lumber will twist and curl and crack and people have tried it before and failed. A grade school teacher for a couple of decades, Bill Monroe enlisted the aid of his sons and his wife in a project he'd long hoped to see completed. The Monroes are probably the only ones around who've been able to pull it off. Oak is hard wood to work with. There's not that much of a market for the lumber and besides, who ever heard of a family running their own sawmill after cutting down the trees from their own farm to boot? Well, I just wanted to do something different for a while, and I was getting kind of fat. The schoolroom's a tough place to get very much exercise. I couldn't discipline myself to jog or anything like that. We had the farm, about 180 acres. About 100 acres of it is oak. So we decided we'd try to do something with the farm. Either that or I'd teach full-time instead of farming part-time. So uh, that's what we did. I quit my teaching job and started looking for parts to a mill. He wound up buying the bulk of those mill parts from a former student. The mill was originally from Montgomery Ward back in the 40s. Starting from scratch, he pieced his mill together and with a little wire here, a discarded tricycle reel there, he fired up the tiny mill and watched it sputter and grind and finally cut wood. Soon the family was cutting down oak trees, dragging them up the hill to their sawmill and watching as they realized those stacks of oak lumber meant they'd beat the odds. All those hours of planning and building had paid off. But Bill Monroe couldn't have done it without his sons. How do you get your children to cooperate so much? I really don't know. I just have awfully helpful kids. <laughs> and uh, my wife helps out here, too. But I couldn't have done it without the help. Uh, they're just willing and, and eager, and I'm not sure why, but <laughs> they've really helped me a lot. Mr. Monroe, do you ever think of yourself as having a little bit of the pioneer instinct in you enough so that you would take the resources you have available and start something like this? I think I have a pioneer instinct. I think if I'd lived a hundred years ago, I, I would have been one to go west, no doubt about that. Bill will probably wind up back in the classroom, setting an example for his son Cliff, who's a student teacher. But for the next few years, you'll find him and the rest of the Monroes on the crest of a hill on their farm, cutting oak. Bill says he's got other projects up his sleeve, but he won't say what. What's the secret to having the gumption many folks would love to have to put aside their life's work and chance something else? I suppose it takes confidence. And I, I've always had a lot of confidence, I guess, and I don't, I don't know that... Um, I don't think that's because I have a lot of talent. I, I guess it's just born in a person. You just feel confident sometimes or you don't. And it's easy for me to want to do some new things. And it's not that I don't like teaching school. I might go back to teaching school. I really miss the kids. But I'm enjoying what I'm doing here, too. Well, after seeing that operation, did you pick up some of the buzzwords out there? Well, Ron, I saw dust, wouldn't you? Oh, I'm sorry I asked. Here's a look at... <laughs>